welcome back you guys to another video today we're inside the 335i yeah so i'm still chasing vanos codes this shit's getting hard <laughs> no not really um i'll take you guys back to the beginning just to kind of explain to you guys kind of what i'm dealing with and uh, let you guys know where i'm going from there and just kind of what we're gonna do today so when i first bought this three right um it was actually pretty clean it, it seemed fine when i picked it up right so on the way home i ended up getting a code that day i thought it was for like the jv4 because the owner told me in the tune um like sometimes they threw it i don't know if it was a fuel pump or something i don't remember it was a while ago exactly the conversation but point being it it, it would throw this code every once in a while there was a vanos 2a82 2a82 um it's the intake vanos code and when I first got the car, I was able to drive from maybe here to the next town. It would last like two, three days and then the code wouldn't pop up at all. Like it would never come up. And then every once in a while it would pop up and I would use my MHD to erase the code and it would go away for a few days again or a few startups or a few drives, whatever. Um, so that went on for a while until I decided that I wanted to fix the problem, right? So the car sat for a few months during winter the snow and everything and you know i wasn't able to drive it a few months later i buy some brand new vanos solenoids right but i cheaped out so i messed up that was my fault i realized that so as soon as i get the new vanos solenoids i install them i did a few other work to the car a few other things and uh, i go for a drive right when i go for a drive this the car immediately throws the vanos down the street vanos code and i was like what the hell like i just replaced them so i was so mad I ended up uh, taking them off, messaging the seller and telling them that they didn't work. So they gave me a refund and I ordered some brand new ones off SCP. Sorry, I take that back. I ordered them from OEM Beamer Parts, right? So that should have fixed the problem. Anyways, I installed these new ones and sure enough, as soon as I warm up the car and I go down the street and I try to hit boost, Vanos intake. So at this point, I... I I know it's not the Vandal solenoids, right? Because I've had two brand new pairs, the second one being OEM. And uh, so I tried swapping the Vandals, intake to exhaust, exhaust to intake, and it's still throwing the intake code, right? Step one is replacing your Vandals, right? That's probably what everyone wants to do, or at least clean them. I tried cleaning them, it didn't go away, so I ended up replacing them. So after I replaced them, um, I started doing more research because I started getting other symptoms like the... Injectors are taking it a little bit louder, right? So I looked them up. They're index 7 injectors um, They're for sure gonna need replacing and I'm sure one of them is leaking because when I do start the car It is a little bit louder, right? But I don't think that's throwing my my uh, Vanos code So and I kept looking into it and other people were saying it's gonna be the cam ledge bearings, right? Which is like a $550 piece plus you're gonna need a few other things to go with that, right? So it ends up being like an expensive job, seven eight hundred dollars, if you do it yourself. Plus, you gotta get the timing um, tools and whatnot, and you gotta know how to do it. Which I don't know how to do it. I can probably figure it out, but it's just kind of a pain in the ass, you know. Um, also, bought the car a steering wheel, pretty sick steering wheel, right? And a little maintenance here and there, but uh, it has like a hundred sixty thousand miles, hundred yeah, some hundred sixty something which I don't want to put a ton of money into because around 200 they're kind of considered useless here in the U.S. Or at least in my opinion, a lot of people don't want a 200 plus mile car. Um, so this thing was like way lower, 120, 130, 100,000 miles or less. Like I would easily throw money at it even though it'd be more annoying because it has less miles. But I'm kind of, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm going to do it, which sucks, but uh, I didn't want to spend that money on this car yet. I kind of wanted to set up the tune, get the J before and all that off. So, but yeah, that's just a story time, right? So that's where we're at. We're at step one, replace the vandals. And then step three would be to replace the cam ledge bearings, right? And everything that goes in there. Teflon um, stuff and whatnot. But uh, so after doing more research, I found the step two, right? So step two is these vandals check valves so the the check valves are on the side of the motor and essentially what they are is they're these little filters that get really 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 clogged up sometimes um usually if the previous owner wasn't good on their maintenance or for some reason dirt got in the oil um 
But there is instances where they look like shit. And there's other instances where they're brand new, right? Um, so today we're going to be checking those on mine. Part of me is hoping that they're really dirty and just clean them. We'll get rid of this 2A82 code that I'm still chasing down. So that way I don't have to spend $700 plus dollars on cam ledge bearings. Or uh, another part of me wishes that they're clean. Because then that would mean that the previous owner actually took care of the car, right? Or at least, like, took a little bit better care of it or did a regular oil intervals and whatnot. So, let me show you where it is in the front of the car. Alright, so, like I said, I've already swapped the vanos. I checked the wiring, make sure there's no cuts. I mean, there's little parts like this where it's missing plastic, um, but nothing crazy. I, I really don't think it's the harness itself. I'm not sure exactly what it is at this point besides those vanos check valves or the cam ledge bearings which will be you know in there after we remove the valve cover but something I wanted to throw in real quick is uh, the previous owner from this car has actually been really really helpful he's um, helped me out whenever I've asked a question he's hit me up after watching my videos and let me know that you know he tried to do the best that he could while he had the car so I'm super thankful that he actually took care of it. I know the previous owners we can't speak for and um, I'm not blaming it on the one right before me, right? Because uh, the guy took amazing care of the car. He like wrapped it, put wheels on it. You know, you can tell he was actually putting in some work into it and trying to take care of it. Um, as far as like the previous owners, we really don't know. So that, this is one of those maintenance items that even if you're 100% sure that the guy before you took care of it, you might still want to check it out because the person before that might have uh, just let it go bad. So I got my front passenger wheel removed, right? I took off the wheel and then I took off the front fender liner. Well, actually, I didn't have it, but if yours has it, you're going to have to take this off. Sorry about the dirt. And then let's see if I can show you guys. The Vanos check valves are going to be, they're going to be those two things right there, right? I know they look like, uh, they're right next to the exhaust uh, manifold in the corner, but it's going to be these two, right? They're, they're a little hard to find. You can find pictures on them and I'll show you guys, but essentially they're in here. Right there, you can see one of them, right? And some people report that it's easier to get it from the top. I think it is. I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it looked like. So for this, all you're going to need is a T40, Torx 40, and some extensions, wobbles, whatever you need to get it out. Be patient with it. You don't want to strip them. Some people strip them, and it's going to be a real bad time for you. So don't do that. Uh, let's go ahead and remove these. Woo! All right, you guys. So I ended up taking off the bolts for the reservoir just to give me a little bit more space because my aftermarket outlets are in the way but I was able to get the top one out see. this is what it looks like so that's actually pretty disgusting um, as you can see there's a ton of filth grime dirt it looks like just stuck on there so I'm gonna clean this off and spray it with some MAF cleaner and then these actually might be bad because when you shake them you're supposed to be able to hear the check valve but they could be just really clogged so let me see after I clean them all right guys so cleaned it up a bit as you can see oh it looks like it has a little bit of burnt mark right here I'm not sure what that is if that's normal or not so it looks a little bit, a lot <laughs> A lot better than when I first got it out, right? Um, also, I was able to get it to make the little noise I was trying to show you guys. Let's see if I can. You hear that? Yeah, this one was uh, completely stuck. The, it wouldn't make that noise at first. I'm thinking maybe it was grimed up and it's finally loose. I'm going to keep playing with it just to keep the movement going. But I think that that was part of the issue, right? I'm most likely going to have to order a new one. They're not that expensive and uh, it's not insanely hard to get out. I think they're like 30 bucks each. But that's just something small that you can check out. 
like I said, I believe this thing was either shut open or shut closed. And it was just letting oil keep going through. Um, like I said, it wouldn't make that, that valve noise. That one right there. But now that means that it's moving freely. Alright guys, so I just pulled off the exhaust one or the bottom one I believe it is. And uh, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. There's a little bit of grime right here on the bottom edges as you can see. Um, the same burn mark. Before I clean it, let's see if it makes some noise. So this one doesn't make the noise either. Alright, so after a little bit of cleaning, Right, but it still gets a little stuck. These are definitely gonna have to get replaced at some point ASAP. I'm gonna go ahead and order these. Like I said, just because they're not that expensive. But even though they make the noise, I'm not fully convinced, so I'm gonna let these. A little baggie with math cleaner. All right, I'll throw them both in there. Spray some mass airflow sensor cleaner. And I'm going to let these soak up for about 30 minutes, get all the little contaminants out of there, you know, break down any little buildup that might be left. And then I'll go ahead and install them back in. Alright you guys, so it's been 30 minutes. Uh, let me show you guys what it looks like. So these are the panel solenoids. It doesn't really matter which one's which because they're uh, interchangeable. But uh, You guys hear that? You can hear it on both now fairly easy every once in a while if you hold them upside down they kind of seem to struggle for some reason I'm not sure if that's normal but as soon as you flip it the other way and gravity is working with you it does a lot better essentially what these do is though they make sure that the oil only goes in one way but you want to make sure that they're not getting stuck they all sound like they're working now I'm super excited I'm hoping this is a fix so that way I don't have to do the cam ledge brains because it's gonna be fucking annoying yeah, just a reminder to actually like let them hang out for a bit because look, all this junk was still stuck inside of the vandal solenoid. And I'm sure there's still more, but uh, and the water turned out disgusting looking. And that was after I had already cleaned them, so yeah, just uh, some advice there. I'm gonna go ahead and install these back in and then I'm gonna take it for a ride later. So it's a new day. I've reset the vandals and adaptations, and I actually went for a ride, right? And they threw the code right away. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe the vandals valve was sticking or something. But uh, I went back. I flipped the vandal switches, and they started running like shitty, like really bad. And then I put them back to normal. Car started idling fine again, and I decided I'd give it some gas before I did anything right and just mash on it so while I was staying on there I revved it up to 4,000 just parked kept it there for like a second or two let off and then I've been taking it for a ride ever since and no vandals codes and this thing pulls like a freight train so um, I'm not sure what what's going on exactly I'm super relieved actually right now I'm taking it for a little bit of a cruise see if it'll come back I'm hoping it won't because uh, the car is running insanely good and it feels really really good so I'm excited freaking code came back up you guys what the hell I guess uh, yeah Camlet just could be going bad it's just you know, some... <laughs>